الليالي نائما ورأيت رؤيا في المنام كان الإمام المهدي عليه السلام واقفا به قرب من ضريح سيد محمد عليه السلام أخو الإمام العسكري عليه السلام وأمرني بالحضور بلقائه عليه السلام وبعد ذلك استيقظ وكان في الساعة الثانية ليلا وصليت أربع ركعة من صلاة الليل ومعدت للنوم فرأيت رؤيا ثانية قريبة من هذه الرؤيا وأيضا كان فيها الإمام المهدي عليه السلام يحدث في لقاء معه عليه السلام واستيقظت وكانت الساعة الرابعة ليلا فأكملت صلاة الليل وصليت الفجر ثم بعد يومين من هذه الرؤى سافرت الى سامراء وزرت الامام العسكري والهادي عليهم السلام ثم عدت الى بلد وزرت الامام سيد محمد عليه السلام ثم الى بغداد وزرت الامامين الكاظم والجواد عليهم السلام ثم الى كربلاء وزرت الامام الحسين عليه السلام والشهداء عليه السلام والتقيت بالامام المهدي عليه السلام ليلا في ضريح الامام الحسين عليه السلام ثم التقيت به عند الصباح في اليوم التالي في مقام الامام المهدي عليه السلام الموجود في كربلاء في نهايه شارع السدرة وجلسنا لوحدنا في المقام الذي كان فارغا الا من الخادم الذي كان يقف في مصلى النساء وهو معزول تقريبا عن المكان الذي كنا فيه على كل حال كان هذا اليوم هو الثلاثين من شعبان سنة 1420 هجري قمري وعدت بعد هذا اللقاء إلى المنزل وصمت شهر رمضان بفضل من الله علي وشددت الرحال في نهاية شهر رمضان إلى النجف الأشرف وبدأت أطرح ما عرفت من الحق واحتد النقاش بيني وبين بعض الطلبة like me talk to the slaves they didn't kill them they sent some old house negro along behind him to undo what he said you have to read the history of slavery to understand this there were two kinds of negroes there was that old house negro and the field negro and the house negro always looked out for his master when the field negroes got too much out of line he held them back in check he put them back on the plantation 
The house Negro could afford to do that because he lived better than the field Negro. He ate better, he dressed better, and he lived in a better house. He lived right up next to his master in the attic or the basement. He ate the same food his master ate and wore his same clothes. And he could talk just like his master. master. Good diction. And he loved his master more than his master loved himself. That's why he didn't want his master hurt. If the master got sick, he'd say, what's the matter, boss? We sick? When the master's house caught a fire, he'd try and put the fire out. He didn't want his master's house burned. He never wanted his master's property threatened. And he was more defensive of it than the master was. That was the house Negro. But then you had some field Negroes who lived in huts, had nothing to lose. They wore the worst kind of clothes, they ate the worst food, and they caught hell. They felt the sting of the lash. They hated their master. Oh, yes, they did. If the master got sick, they prayed that the master died. <laughs> if the master's house caught a fire, they prayed for a strong wind to come along. This was the difference between the two. And today, you still have house Negroes and field Negroes. I'm a field Negro. I'm a field Negro. I'm a field Negro. Today, in mind slavery, there are two main kinds of slaves, the Hausa Mullah and the House Muslim. Man, there be plenty of House Muslims about. You can recognize them from the way they wait for the scraps thrown to them by their political masters. Complacent, content, bone idle individuals, government funded, democracy loving obedient, servants of the empires and presidencies. Saudi-loving supporters of the petrol-driven, petrodollar-driven corruption. Ahlubayt hating fakes who dress like the pious scholars. They play a game of semantics to pacify the masses. They hide their subjugation while, whilst others can see straight through it. Their guise of religiosity hides their real infidelity. Willingly or unwillingly they perpetuate the conditions of their own slavery. They block the route to true freedom. Man, they are comatose. And even better, there is the Hausa Mullah. They live in the house with the Marja. They dress pretty good. They eat good because they eat the Marja's food. They live in the plush apartments or the Hausa close by the Marja. They love Marja more than the Marja loves himself. Oh yes, they do. If the Marja got sick, the Hausa Mullah would say, What's the matter, Sayyidina? We sick? We sick? Can you imagine that? And if you came to the Hausa Mullah and said, Your Marja is wrong, the Hausa Mullah would look at you with wild, crazy eyes and say, Man, you're crazy. The Marja never be wrong. We've got Hausa Mullahs running TV stations and other big institutions. I know who you are, Hausa Mullahs, and all you house Muslims. And I'm coming for you. Question 87. The Allegories, Volume 3. Is there a reason for the birth of Imam Ali in the Kaaba? Answer 
the Kaaba or the sanctified house of Allah is but the manifestation and appearance of the occupied house which was placed in the heaven so that the angels may circumambulate it i.e. do tawaf around it and seek forgiveness for the debate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding his Khalifa Adam alayhi salam and when Adam alayhi salam transgressed regarding the tree of the knowledge of Ali Muhammad the family of Muhammad alayhi salam and the tree of Wilaya sovereignty and authority and we did not find any determination in him meaning for enduring and bearing the Wilaya of Ali Muhammad alayhi salam he was sent down to the earth and commanded to do the tawaf around the Kaaba so that Allah forgive him his shortcomings then Allah legislated the Hajj to his sanctified house the Al Kaaba that people could offer their allegiance to Allah's Hujjah proof of their time and admit their shortcomings and that they ask forgiveness for committing shortcomings regards his right of being followed just as Allah commanded the Muslims to make the Kaaba a Qibla the direction for them as opposed to the previous nations for whom the Qibla was Bayt al muqaddas the Temple of Jerusalem and there are some noteworthy points here one the Kaaba is tightly linked with Wilaya since the Hajj is made towards it the Kaaba to meet the Hujjah and also by people presenting the pledge of Wilaya to him and seeking forgiveness for committing shortcomings regards his right of Wilaya two the Kaaba is the direction of the Salah the prayer and the sujood the prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst the sujood before it was to Adam alayhi salam the vice garant of Allah and his hujjah in fact the sujood was to the nur the light which was in his posterity progeny and it is the nur the light of Amir al-Mu'minin the prince of the believers Ali alayhi salam so the first qibla towards which the angels turn their faces is Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam so the true qibla is not the Kaaba and the stones the qibla is but the gem which the Kaaba gave birth to and it is the wali of Allah and his complete hujja proof Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and for this the black stone was placed in the corner of the Kaaba because it is the book of pledge which Allah took from man for the successorship of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam so the one who faces towards the Kaaba recognizes by force the succession of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam with his actions though with his speech and his heart he may be an ingrate regarding it he the most high said and to Allah prost- prostrates he who is in the heavens and the earth in obedience or by force obediently he who recognizes his succession and by force he who has not recognized the succession and he Allah said have you not seen that Allah whosoever in the skies and whosoever in the earth bows down to him and so does the sun the moon the stars the mountains the trees the livestock and many from men and many from whom the punishment has been decreed and whomever Allah abased for him there is none to honor verily Allah does what he wishes so the ones who prostrate whilst the punishment has been decreed on them they are the ones who do not recognize the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam with their speech nor with their hearts but they are forced to acknowledge it with their deeds and their prostration to the small shell which gave birth to Ali alayhi salam and it is the Kaaba and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abase them with this prostration and it will surely be a regret on them
and whoever Allah abases, for them there is none to honor. And it remains that the Qibla is that with which attention is paid towards Allah and by which you recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the actual Qibla is the complete man with which Allah is recognized and who is the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with whom he faced his creation and facing him is facing Allah and the complete man is Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam leader of the awsiya executors and awliya friends of Allah and Allah extracted him from the Kaaba that he say to man verily this man is your Qibla and towards him is your Hajj the pilgrimage so had I a son he would have been born in my house say if Al-Rahman had a son then I am the first of the worshippers and who is more appropriate that he be taken as Qibla the stones or who has purified the stones with his birth in them Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam said that whose meaning was you are the scholars of evil you say whosoever swears by the temple he is not bound by his oath but he who swears by the gold of the temple his oath is binding so which is mightier or you ignorant and blind people the gold or the temple which has purified the gold <laughs>